The first thing I've pulled out is just down here and it's um, lucky I pulled it out actually I thought it was a bone I thought it was a bit of bone so I pulled it out but actually it's a knife it looks like a really nice knife actually let's um let's go and wash it I pulled it out to have a look because sometimes and I, I haven't actually found one myself but sometimes with bits of bone you can find markings to indicate somebody may have used it as a ruler or something and so I thought oh that looks like a piece of bone let's pull it out and ended up with um, this yeah rather nice knife here well that's a lovely surprise I wonder if that's a bone handle definitely got some age to it though. <laughs> it's not going to wash it off very well is it? <laughs> oh how nice. Okay. Shall look forward to examining that later and seeing what that handle's made out of but it looks like it could be bone. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look, how strange is this? I've just seen yet another knife. Another old knife here. Small one. Little pen knife. Maybe a bone handle as well. Okay, now keep a little eye out for signs of a clay pipe. Oh, I've just seen another sign of a clay pipe actually. A tiny bit of stem here poking out of the mud, but it is just a tiny piece of stem, that's all it is. Although, actually, it does have a, a maker on, so I take back that. It's never just a stem. We'll have a look at that later. But what I'm looking at is, can you see it? Just here, look. Look at that. And you can see the end there, which is completely sort of intact, i.e. hasn't been snapped. So that is the actual end of the pipe. So is this going to be a whole pipe? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, can I cope with the excitement? Now, initial tests do indicate a little bit of resistance. So, oh my goodness, and do you know what? There is a maker on it as well. This is exciting. This is very, very exciting. So even if there's no bowl, it's gonna be fantastic. So this is the moment of truth, okay? This is the moment of truth. One, two, three, boop, yes! <laughs> it's a whole pipe, oh my gosh. You know what, I'm never ever gonna get fed up with that. That's an intact pipe. And it's plumsted. And the maker is probably going to be stubs or, or it could be Martin or Dudman 
whoever it is, hopefully I'll be able to see when I get home. But that's absolutely beautiful. What a glorious, glorious find. And I shall leave that mud in there because sometimes at the bottom you get the residue of tobacco. And it's all black, but it will fade. Oh, what a treat. It just amazes me really that these pipes still come out intact. It really does. Right, over there I have seen something like a white line poking out along the mud. So I've marked it and it is this, which is wedged ooh, here in the mud, just broke the corner off, not very good Nicola. Of course I'm wondering if it could be a sign or something because look, there's a little hole there, like a hole for a nail. And let's have a look. It'd be amazing if it, if it was a sign and it said, oh, you know what? It does say something. I can see that it says something, but you know, it could be, I think it does. I don't know, maybe I'm imagining things. And it does look, never be, what? Oh my gosh, never be removed. Oh, <laughs> look what it says. It's a plaque and all I can see is it says, never be removed. <laughs> Do you think I should leave it there? We have to see what this says this never be removed. Obviously it was removed and hopefully I'm going to be able to remove it. All right, I'm gonna turn my camera off in a minute because it's a little bit difficult trying to film it and dig it out at the same time. Hopefully it's not too far down. Let's see what else it says. <laughs> Avoid During handling, avoid something. Oh, this is really intriguing, isn't it? Okay, I think it's gonna be a lot easier if I just, oh, I know you wanna be part of it though, don't you? You wanna be part of it as it's gradually revealed. I can't even really kneel down because I'll just end up, well actually, there's a handy round thing here. I could kneel on that and, there we are, look, kneel on that. Let, oh, ah, let's have a look at this together. I wonder how far down it goes. It's going to be a lot easier for me to do this without holding the camera. So I'll be back shortly. As you can imagine, I had to go slightly elbow deep in this and it's silly because I don't have my gloves in my bag. I usually do carry some gloves even though I don't often wear them but I didn't have them today. But I've managed to I've managed to get it out, dislodge it. Let's see what it says. Oh my goodness. What precautions. We've got bombs there. Fire instantly on breaking in air. Oh my. Good grief. What is this? This is really fascinating. This is really, really fascinating. Look at that. I wonder what it says. I'm gonna go and wash it off, but I'm gonna take a photograph of it as it is first. Right, well, here it is. Look at this. How special is this? Now, it's annoying because that bit is missing. Um, so it's something bombs fire instantly on breaking in air. If fire started accidentally, use water freely. Store bombs in a cool place underwater if possible. Do not store near inflammable material. Avoid storing many bombs close together. Stringent precautions must be taken to avoid cracking bombs during handling. Wow, this is absolutely incredible. What a find. What a fabulous, fabulous find. Amazing. Wow. It's so peaceful here, it's hard to think about 
a time when there were bombs going off everywhere. Well, after that excitement, I can't wait to get home and research that sign. I'm wondering what kind of bombs they're talking about. Incendiary bombs, could it be? I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm walking along here and I can see some nice bits of pottery poking out. But I have also noticed just down here a button here. It'd be great if there's something on the other side. Oh, there is! There is, there is, there is. Oh my goodness, there is. H G S. Now that could be. I don't know. Now could that be Greenwich Hospital ship? Or surgeon? I don't know. Another one to look up. Isn't that amazing? Fantastic. I'm just. You know what, sometimes you just go out and it's just so exciting, I can't even begin to tell you. So, so exciting. What's this? Metal. There's no pipes on the end of these. It's quite stony here. Oh, mind you, that one might have something. Oh, that one might have something. Gosh, there is a bit of resistance there. There could be a bowl on the end of this stem. Ah, <laughs> there's part of a bowl. Part of a bowl. Oh, that's a different shaped bullet to the usual. I wonder what that one is. Anyone know? Who have we got here? What are you doing here? Well, I've just seen something that could be quite exciting down here. I nearly stepped on it actually, and then luckily I looked down and saw the outline. I wonder if you can see what I'm looking at. Just down here. Can you see anything? So, look at that. That looks like a key, doesn't it? I really hope it is. It looks like a massive key. Let's carefully get it out of the mud. See here, the top and then the bottom bit there. I mean, it's really crusted up, but look at that. That looks like a really big old key. Oh, look. Oh yeah, that does look like an old key. Yes, it is. Wow. That's lovely. I hope I can clean it off without it falling apart. Watch this space. Watch this space. <laughs> I'll get some advice. Um, I think I'll go and give it another rinse off in the in the river. Look at the at the key shaped mark it's left. Well, we've set it free from its muddy home. Finally, after all these years, it's a key. It's a key. The key to the world. Oh, I love that. So much potential. Look, 
There's a tiny little eel down here. Teeny little thing. I'm going to pick it up and throw it in the river. Come on, little eel. Come on. Let's get you in that river. You don't belong in the mud. Teeny little thing. Look at that. Little baby eel. Okay, in you go, buddy. The tide's coming in. Boop. Oop. There we are, look. Look, he's just swum off. That's my good deed for the day, rescuing the eel. Although I'm sure he would have been fine actually, but there you go. Anyway, I feel good about it. Now, what's this? It looks like some kind of fang or a tooth or a tusk. That just there, see? Let's get it out. Ooh. Oh my, what is that? Whatever is that? What is that? Is it part of a fish bone? Hmm. Curious. I may need your help on some ID with this. Okay, into the bag it goes. I've just seen a coin over here. I'm going to pick it up before the tide nabs it. At least I think it's a coin, it could be a button. No, definitely a coin. But, but very, very worn. I don't know if we'll even see what that is or was. I'll have a go at cleaning it up when I get home and we might have some luck, but it just looks very, very thin and worn. Okay, fingers crossed. I'm looking in all these lovely washed, clean areas. And down here, I can see the edge of something round poking out. Let's see if you can Let's see if I can get it in the camera for you. Uh, it's actually yeah, there it is. See. So I'm hoping it's a coin, and indeed it is. That could be a little farthing. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, you can just see the little wren on there. We can have a look at the year later. Oh, that's great. Do you know, it's really funny. I just spotted a, a clay pipe again, I hear you say. And so I stepped back and got my camera out ready to record it and then I'm looking and I thought where the heck is it? It's so camouflaged I can't see it. And then luckily I found it again. <laughs> it's just down here and the bowl is a bit broken I can see but weirdly the stem is actually quite intact um, and I can also see that the, the, the bowl or what's left of it would have been a nice kind of scaly design almost like a fir cone and I have actually got some of these intact as well and there should be a maker on there I think the ones I've got have got a maker or maybe this yes yes it does yeah it does it's a shame that the bowl's broken but I can show you what it would have looked like in its entirety so it's like um it's like a, a fish scale design or a fur cone design so let's have a look it's probably by exactly the same maker that I have already. Let's have a look. It's brilliant finding pipes with the makers on the stems. I, it's just just great, you know, because you can just find out about them. A bit difficult to read at the moment, but it's from Deptford. Yeah. When that fades, you'll be able to see a lot better the name and also the design. So even though that's just a broken pipe, I am really, really happy with that.
Look, somebody's lost their keys here or they've thrown them in. I love zingy. Looks like they've been in there a while actually, doesn't it? They're a bit rusty. Down here, there is a clay pipe bowl and it's a really strange one. It's got sort of clay stuck to the bottom of the stem there. I've never seen anything like that. That looks like it could be a, a reject, a pipe reject. That's so strange. I think I can see a potential candidate for the Thames Tideline Art Toy, Lost Toy Orphanage. Let's start that again. The Tideline Art Thames Lost Toys Orphanage. Oh dear, he's not in a great shape, is he? He's a little bunny with one leg and broken arms. But I can't leave him here, can I? He'll be fine after a little go through the uh, washing machine. A few stitches. You can sew him on a new leg. You'll get on very well with all the other lost toys. Now look over here. This is a rather glorious religious offering. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. It has changing pictures. Oh, and it's got a changing picture on the other side as well. Ooh. for watching I hope you're all really well and welcome to my studio well that mud can be a bit dull at times so I thought I'd brighten things up a bit and get my nice bright red top on and my sparkly earrings so here I am very much looking forward to spending some time with you as we go through these finds which featured in today's video they were not all found on the same day but they were all found within a few weeks of one another so I'm going to start with what I consider to be my absolute top find which is this sign. Very, very unexpected. I've never found a sign wedged in the mud like that. I was a little bit worried that I wasn't going to be able to get it out, uh, but luckily it wasn't too big. It's not in the best state, as you can see. Um, that's what the back looks like. And it's clearly been in the mud for quite some time, but it's a really fascinating piece of history from World War II and the Essential, there it is, missing few letters would have been A and W. So they were A and W bombs, Albright and Wilson. And this plaque would have been actually on a box which held A, W bombs. Now, as you can imagine, my search engine is looking a little bit dodgy at the moment because I've been looking up all about A, W bombs and how they were made, etc. And they were mostly used, apparently, by the Home Guard during World War II. They were phosphorus bombs in bottles, like little milk bottles. And they were used by the Home Guard in their Northover projectors, which were like um, makeshift anti-tank devices, these types of guns. And when they broke, when the glass broke, these bombs used to explode very, very vividly, and hence these sort of very strict precautions about handling them. So I wonder whether somewhere even further under the mud, maybe um, the actual box is there. I don't know. I did post this on Twitter when I found it and it was in June 
and the Imperial War Museum, they wrote back and said that you have to be so careful, obviously, with these finds, especially anything bomb related, because they still do, um, in many cases, what they were made to do, even if it's several decades after when they were initially meant to do it. So it's good that I didn't actually stumble on the entire box of them. So um, wherever they are, let's hope they just stay oh, very safely. <laughs> Meters under the mud, hopefully. So yeah, very, very interesting. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on a piece of wood and put it on my wall. It's, um, yeah, really, really pleased with that. We do find so many military artefacts along the River Thames um, in the form of buttons, cap badges, belt buckles, ammunition, have you seen? And um, I have, of course, found an unexploded uh, Mills bomb once upon a time that was back in I think it was 2016 and I called the police and the ordnance squad came and they detonated it and it is actually on my channel the the explosion of this hand grenade it was very very loud although I'm not sure to be honest how much of that was the actual explosive device that they put onto the Mills bomb itself I don't think it was all the grenade but still it really makes you think what it must have been like uh, fighting in a war with grenades going off all around you. Something else which could be also quite lethal and it is this knife here. Now it's not a bone handle as I thought it might be, it's actually a wooden handle but it's quite nice, it looks as if somebody's taken some time and carved it really nicely and I like the shape of the blade as well, it's still really sharp. And I would imagine that it is 19th century, maybe maybe early 19th century. If you have any ideas on how old it could be, please do let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Um, my key, another favourite find from this video. Here it is. And I did manage to clean it up quite well. And as you can see, it does not have a hole in the top. I was a bit disappointed in that. And I did find out whilst researching keys that this top bit here is called the bow and all the keys that I found um, do have holes in the top so why doesn't this one have a hole in the top and by the way I should also mention that when I looked up um, dating keys or how to date keys that's right how to date keys I then came up with um, tips for Key tips for dating, that's right. So um, instead of finding out about how to um, date keys, I now know all about um, lots of tips for dating. So there you go. Again, uh, slightly dubious um, internet search history going on here today. <laughs> so um, I don't know. I'm thinking also probably 19th century, this key. What do you think? What do you think? And um, do you have any thoughts as to why it does not have the usual hole in the bow. Now let's move on to this little button here. Really lovely little button with GHS on it. Now I do find quite a lot with RNH which is Royal Naval Hospital but GSH I'm not quite so sure. I was thinking Greenwich um, Hospital Ship or Greenwich Hospital Surgeon or Greenwich Seamen's Hospital and in fact I did just put a tweet out on Twitter so let's go and have a look here and see if anybody has come up with anything. Ah, oh, okay, one guy, Andrew Bird, here. Really nice find, the Thames keeps on giving, could be from Sea Hospital. These gentlemen seem to have a plethora of buttons. Somebody else has suggested the Royal Hospital School. And somebody else, Mike Stockbridge, thank you very much, Mike has suggested that it could have been one of the hospital ships moored off of Greenwich, the HMS Grampus or the HMS Dreadnought. So a couple of possibilities there. Again, if you have any ideas, please let me know. It's a particularly lovely button. And um, I'm thinking again, hmm, I don't know, late 18th, early 19th century, possibly. There's no maker, actually. So there's that. 
Right, yeah, this uh, this mystery thing here, it definitely looks like something that's probably come of a fish, doesn't it? Um, but, yeah, I don't know. What part of a fish is it? Do you know? If you know what part of a fish that could be, please let me know. So I've got my little 1939 farthing here. I cleaned it up. It's 1939. It's got a little wren on it and George, of course. And um, when I was looking up, why is there a wren on a farthing? I found out all sorts of things. I didn't actually find out why there was a wren on a farthing, uh, but I did find out that one mute, a male mute swan weighs as much as 1,400 wrens. You learn something new every day. So uh, yeah, keep watching my channel because you never know what you're gonna learn. The other coin, which is here, uh, I did try and clean it up and there is absolutely nothing on it. It is really wafer thin, very, very wafer thin, but it's exactly the same shape, oh well, not the same shape, but the same size as this George III uh, halfpenny. And I think, chances are, it's probably one of those, you see, the same, same size. So I did have some pie pitch in this video. So this one here, it's really nice. It's got plumstead on that side, which is where the maker made it. But unfortunately, on this side here, you cannot make out the maker. But there are a few it could be. Um, and I'm thinking it's probably Thomas Jephthah Stubbs because he was a Plumstead clay pipe maker and I find quite a few of his pipes. One good thing about this uh, clay pipe is that it does have a lot of tobacco in the bottom there. Under the mud, um, there was a great big dottle of tobacco. So it's always nice to find the tobacco still preserved under the mud at the bottom of these pipe bowls. So it's a really nice entire pipe. The other pipe, not quite so entire, but it's um, it's faded now so you can see it a lot better and you can see that lovely design there and I'm going to show you a couple of pipes in a minute made by the same maker um, but they are intact. And this was made by Birchall of Deptford, so it's probably Joseph Birchall and he was making clay pipes um, in the mid 19th century. I just found him on the electoral register for 1871 in Deptford, registered as a clay pipe maker. And in fact, I do have two clay pipes exactly the same made by Joseph Birchall of Deptford. So another one to add to my virtual collection. I've got my plastic soldier and as it happens it is Remembrance Day today, it's Remembrance Sunday. Well at least it is when you're watching this video. It's actually Friday now so it was Remembrance Day yesterday um, on the 11th of November but it's Remembrance Sunday today when you're watching this video. So it's a really great opportunity just to remember all those who have fought and laid down their lives for their countries everywhere, be that in the past, in the present. I particularly like to think about the stories that I found in the River Thames, which relate to people who have lost their lives whilst fighting for their country. Two of my favourite stories are the ones which relate to this very small tag here, a brass luggage tag, which really sort of um, captures the whole essence of mudlarking for me. It has the name Fred Jury 72 Woolwich Road on it and because it had the date or has the date and the name Fred Jury I was able to find out all about Frederick Jury who went to Australia from London to join the Australian Imperial Force who fought in World War One in the trenches, who lost several fingers, spent time in hospital, then left the army, married his landlady, and then died in about 1932 when I went to find his grave, his final resting place, which was in the pauper's um, grave section of the cemetery, not far from where I live. So it was really special to, to be able to find his story because he didn't have any children of, of his own who could sort of 
tell his story. And now quite a lot of people know all about Frederick Jewry. He did, of course, survive the war, which is great news. Uh, many, many others didn't. Um, but just finding where his final resting place was and telling his story was very, very special. Um, another soldier who fought in World War I, who wasn't so fortunate, was a boy related to this padlock, which I found in the mud a few years ago. And it literally did unlock the story of a young lad called Sidney Morrow. Um, this padlock, it has on it G.E. Morrow, which st stands for George Edward Morrow, who had like a shipbroker's yard in Limehouse. Now him and his wife had about 12 children and their youngest son, Sidney, he went to fight in World War I just two months before the end of the war. And uh, he, he sadly, he died um, in Flanders, I think it was. Um, I can't quite remember, but I'll put the link up to the story I wrote about him. And so I went to Limehouse and I found the World War I memorial in St Anne's Churchyard where Sydney was actually baptised. And Sydney's name is on there, so I went to see the memorial and took the padlock there and um, spent some time just thinking about Sydney and all the other countless um, men, old and young, who died during that terrible war. I'm also going to mention my grandfather. I never met my grandfather. He is here. He's called Victor, Victor Hall. And here he is looking very dapper. And he was actually on the HMS Repulse in World War II, which was bombed in 1941. I think it was the 10th of December, 1941. And he went down with the ship, but he did actually survive. He came up with no clothes on because the suction had taken all his clothes off. He came up and he was rescued by another ship and he lived to tell the tale. Um, oh, and I nearly forgot the rabbit. <laughs> the rabbit is here. Also been through um, what looks like a little bit of a rabbit war and I'm afraid that I did not um, get time yet to sew on any limbs but for the time being I'm sure the rabbit's going to be very happy with some of the other limbless animals up on my Tideline Art Thames Toy Orphanage shelf. This weekend I am putting out some of my glass fish for sale and I am as I've said before, leaving Etsy. I will not be on Etsy anymore. And I'm going to put my fish and other items for sale in my Kofi shop. You can have a, a, a shop in Kofi and I'm going to try that out. So as of Sunday, if you visit my um, Kofi account and go to the shop part, you will be able to see some of the objects or the Thames fish and some cards and maybe some other items if I get time um, that will be for sale. Um, also, on the subject of buying things, Christmas is coming up, it's not that far away. Um, I went out and met up with Wendy Meister the other day. Wendy is the lovely lady who makes jewellery. Uh, she's very inspired by the River Thames and mudlarking. Um, we went out for a little outing on the Thames and she is now um, having a little sale on her site on Folksy. And if you want to buy any of her jewellery, if you put in the code at checkout Pipe Queen, I can't think why that code is called Pipe Queen, um, but anyway, Pipe Queen, then you will be able to have 15% off. So there's some really good... Uh, bargains on her site and some really really beautiful jewellery. So I think that is it for now. Thank you very much for spending time with me on the foreshore today and for spending time with me here. If you know anything about any of those finds, the mystery bone and the button, um, if you've got any additional information that would, you would like to share with me and with everybody, please do put it in the comments down below. And as always, I'm very, very grateful for all your comments and your feedback and your input. Um, you're a really great community of people to, to have who watch my videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I'm very grateful. So that's all from me for now. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again very soon and sharing some more stories and finds from the Thames Mud. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Okay, here's the thing. I am busily trying to edit my video and I have my friend, the squirrel, constantly coming to disturb me. Looking for nuts. Because I have a little nut box there that I put his nuts in and he constantly comes and empties it as fast as can be and then keeps coming back asking for more and it's very hard to resist I have a little call that I use for him Squibble! Squibble! Do you want a nut? Okay Always keep nuts handy when editing videos Come on then! Come on! I have a defunct cat flap Okay, come on then. Come on. <laughs> Don't eat them so fast. Right, you want one more? Come on then. <laughs> That'll be it. He'll go away and he'll come back in about another five minutes. He gets very, very impatient and actually rattles the cat flap. Right, okay, just a few more. Just a few more then. Come on then. One more. Does anybody else have any, any pets that call on them? <laughs> <laughs>